What's up guys, welcome back to Shifting Lanes. My name is Gregson and this is my 2005 Volvo V70R. By all means, this is a normal-ish wagon and this isn't. So if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching, and if you like what you see, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and a subscribe to our channel at the end. That is Dan, and that is the aforementioned not normal wagon, because that's kind of a normal wagon. We've done a lot to it. But Dan has a really interesting story behind this one, and if you know uh, this channel at all, you will have seen last month that we did a video uh, with my friend Joey, who I knew through the Volvo groups, and uh, this is his friend Dan, and Joey actually did a lot of the work to this front end, which is very, you know, apocalypse you know ish and uh we'll get into that in just a minute but what i'm going to do is i'm going to spin the camera around put it on dan he will be able to describe his own car way better than i ever would so without further ado let's check out this rally prepped apocalypse ish very very cool subaru outback so this is dan thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to drive your car and to film your car today because it's very interesting um I think we should start right up front, obviously, because... Oh, you don't want to start in the back? No, well, there's nothing interesting back there. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a... Look, that's actually a good place to start. This is, overall, a normal Subaru Outback, right? Yes. It's a standard 2.5, flat 4. Um, nothing special done to it, interior or performance-wise. It's primarily just aesthetics for the outside, but it's also usable. It's not just there for shits and giggles. Cool, so that's a good place to start, obviously. So normal Outback other than this, which is the main sort of theme of the car. You wanted this to be sort of a, a usable off-road, um, dirt road, not necessarily rock crawling um, vehicle. And you can see that it's done uh, to the front end, obviously a winch. So tell us about what you've done uh, here and what, uh, what exactly is on this car. Uh, first and foremost is that we had to strip the front of the car uh, the bumper, a bunch of bolts, etc. Little stuff. Had to remove the little rubber underguard that never helps anybody. Um, and then we had to pretty much put the bumper together. Um, had to where all the little screws are down here. Had to pretty much put that on. Uh, wire up the fog lights to the actual main uh, wiring system, and then kind of piece it together but then we realized that we forgot to put the winch on so we had to pull it apart put the winch <laughs> back on and then try to make it fit however the winch uh being that it's not the right size for the bumper to radio ratio we had to customize it even more to make it fit so basically what you're saying is this is a lot more than just a bumper obviously there's yes. a lot of work that went into this and not necessarily just oh hey like let's, let's slap this on right and you know the, the, oh you have a, a, a cool front end so this is you were telling me off camera this is all, all aluminum right it's all aluminum. so this is not plastic there's nothing plastic on here you can kind of see uh down here there's you know big welds on the side um this is obviously pretty heavy duty stuff so you're not you're not talking about like a plastic bumper with some with some you know winch pieces uh, like welded into the frame rails or, or anything you know weird like that this is all like a custom a custom job yeah i wanted something that was more flush with the vehicle uh you see way too many jeep fronts falling off <laughs> that or just being slapped on the car welded straight to the frame and it i mean it works but you kind of want to stand out from the scene a little bit more so you want to do something a little bit different um, but also make it usable so it's not just there for looks being that this is not a show car it's a daily that i decided to you know do some work to it because when you're a photographer and you hang out with car friends all the time they kind of start telling you to do stuff to your car and you kind of sort of fall into the peer pressure of doing it but it's a good <laughs> thing to do because it's fun as hell when you start doing this stuff to your car that's right yeah case in point that thing's way fun. So, um, but yeah, so, so back to this, obviously this is this is sort of the centerpiece of the car. Um, you have a full winch, so, so tell us about what exactly is installed. You said there's light bars, obviously, there's two fog lights, um, and then there's a winch. So where who made this for you and, and what, what exactly is it? You won't be able to find this bumper anywhere else on any other vehicle for this generation outback so this is this is a one this is a one of one example you're saying it's a one of one correct that's cool um so what exactly how was it made then if this is a one of one example how did, did you send out your bumper to to get 
molded by them? So how do they how do they make this? They were able to just take big pieces of cardboard, kind of put it against uh, every generation of Outback, Forester, and Legacy. I guess a WRX too if they did one. Draw it out, cut it out, put it back on the front. Okay, it kind of fits, kind of doesn't. And then the guy went to welding pieces together to try to make it really form fitting. And then I think he said after like six months of trial and error, he's able to put the first one together for um, a guy out in Washington State. And uh, he started going from there. I think this is really cool. Um, I mean, you can kind of tell from <laughs> just this angle. It's very, it's it's really cool to like see the like bumper cutaway. Uh, I'm a huge fan of what, how it looks. And um, I, I know I mentioned this off camera. This is your logo here. Uh, as you said, you're a photographer. Right. Um, and I think that's kind of neat because a lot of people, I don't know, I'm not sure if this happens to you, but if it was me, I would say, oh, is this a special edition Outback? Sort of like how Over Finch does like Range Rovers and Land Rovers. Because that's a very cool logo, and to me, if you, you've done all the badges on your car, right? Like yes. the front, the steering wheel, and the rear. To me, that would be like, oh, well, that's like a special edition Subaru that no one's heard about. So I think that's just a, a really nice little touch that not a lot of people would notice. We'll walk around the side because I think you've done a couple more things to the car. It's not like crazy, but obviously you've done wheels and tires. Right. Um, and you've done like, it look, looks like a little bit of a chrome delete. Uh, around um, is this thing lifted at all? It's not. It's not. It looks lifted, honestly, with the with the bumper. I think it looks it looks a lot more raised. I mean, the V70R sitting there, it's definitely like it looks a lot higher than a normal Subaru Outback just from just from the front bumper uh, aesthetic. But what have you done with the wheels and tires? What exactly are these? Uh, Koenig wheels, 17 by seven and a half. Off-roading, you want the smallest rim size possible. You want more tire, because you need more traction and grip and all the stuff that makes off-roading fun. Absolutely. Uh, the tires are, um, so Falcon just recently came out with these new Wild Peak Trail all-terrain tires, which is kind of like the between the AT3s, which are the more heavy duty um, all-terrain off-road tires versus their other all-season junk. Don't get all-season unless you drive a normal car. Um, <laughs> 235, 65, 17 tires. Uh, these Koenigs, they are inexpensive. Um, I actually called Koenig the day after I was able to pick up my wheels and I said, hey, I'm going off-roading for like three days. Um, I'll call you back if they break. And they got nervous, they're like, okay. Mind you, they're racing wheels for the track. <laughs> so a week later, called them back and said, hey, no issues, no cracks, no dents. Well, that's awesome. Anything. And I've had them for uh, almost two years now, and they're still holding up. Uh, another reason why this car is a little more custom than the norm is that the leather seats didn't come from the factory at the really? time. Uh, the premium doesn't come with leather. It's an optional upgrade. It's still... Uh, where I bought it, they said the original owners who bought the car, they wanted to put leather seats in there. However, at the time, we couldn't swap factory seats because some complications happened. Dealership stuff, I don't know what they're talking about. So they called up a company that they're affiliated with and said, hey, we want leather seats put into this car. Um, make it look as factory as possible, um, but put a little twist on it, do something cool with it. So they added white stitching around the seams and then also put the word estate on the top half of it. Estate meaning wagon. I thought it was pretty neat at the time. I didn't know anything about uh, cars other than the basic model where you get like next to nothing in the car. So it was a nice touch to see that it had leather and then I come to find out, oh, it's not factory. It's aftermarket factory, if that makes sense. <laughs> Half bespoke. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. It's a nice little touch that you don't usually don't see in a lot of uh, a lot of cars. No. So I think it's neat that it has it says a state sort of like WRX or or yeah. STI on a lot of the other Subaru seats. So I think that's kind of that's kind of cool, especially since a lot of people in America don't know what an estate is. I like I like that sort of ambiguity to it. I think it's very 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 neat. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's let's hop around back. I think there's not there's not a ton done, but you have done uh, just a rear tail uh, sort of uh, blackout. Yeah. And the reflectors because. Well, why not? Yeah. I guess last question for you since uh, we've stood outside and it's 19 degrees and it's freezing out here um, is may I may I take it for a drive? Sure, let's do it. Perfect. So we've hopped inside and uh, I mean, it's a normal Subaru. This is a, uh, it's 
I mean, I've, I owned a WRX for five years, and yeah, this is it's nice in here. Uh, Super uh, Outbacks are their best vehicles; they really are. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, Subaru Outback so boring." It's but boring can be very good because it's well made, it's a good car, and it's just reliable. Like, there's not a lot that goes wrong with these things ever. And with you saying all of that, it's not boring. Exactly, and but a lot of people consider that boring. Like, it's not boring. And you have a ridiculous front bumper in a good way. It's true. <laughs> so like seeing that, like how, like how many necks do you break when when you like drive by people and people are, like see this and go, what is that thing? Thankfully, nobody's crashed yet from breaking their neck too hard. So, <laughs> you know. but you do All get right. you do get looks. Yeah, I'm majority sure. of the people actually do look. It's not kids. It's primarily people in their like forties and fifties because I guess super buyers. Yeah, at the time, <laughs> oh, back in my day, I used to do super stuff with my friends, but we had Jeeps, we had trucks, but this is different, this is cool. It's like, thank I like you. it. Yeah. This is awesome. All right, let's get going. Whoa. <laughs> I can already tell the weight. Yeah. Oh my God, even just pulling out, it like just pulls you downhill. That's amazing. Um, but this is basically the same area we did the S80 video with Joey. Um, and there's, there's like some great roads back in here, but there's a great dirt road. We figured, you know, we're in a. We're in a Subaru Outback that has, you know, rally spec a little bit, so why not? We're not going to go too fast on these back roads because, I mean, one, it's back roads and <laughs> you don't want to get pulled over, but uh, we'll, we'll toss it around a little on the dirt, nothing crazy. Um, right off the bat, you can definitely tell there's a ton of weight up front, like a lot more. Do you know how much weight you put on with that, with all the stuff up front? Everything up front? Uh, I want to say... A hundred or so, uh, give or take, okay. um, because of the skid plate that sits under the car, that's an extra, uh, eh, probably twenty pounds overall. Okay. Uh, so let's, it's probably about one hundred twenty pounds up front. Interesting, one hundred and twenty pounds, and a lot of people will not really think that one hundred and twenty pounds is a lot. You know, it's it's a light human being, but when you put it over the nose of a car. Oh yeah, it's you totally notice different. it instantly. And like yeah. I've driven an Outback before. I've driven a bunch of Subarus. Uh, my wife test drove test drove a um, uh, a Forester before she bought her Honda CRV. Like you can tell when <laughs> when the, something's different on yeah. one of these cars. And that definitely like pulling right out. You could just tell it was uh, <laughs> it's a lot more weight up front. It's actually nice going downhill. You get a little extra weight to kind of move it around. Right. Um, but you were saying, you were telling me just now off camera, it's a little different uh, when you're going uphill. It is because obviously you have the extra weight up front, and you need to really kind of get it going to, to move it uphill. Yep. Just up a little hill like that, not too bad. But you're talking about like long, long uphill runs, maybe on like a highway or something. Yeah, they're not fun. <laughs> this thing's super fun. I mean, we're not we're not doing we're doing like thirty. But um, like, that's thirty. Yeah. Know. This is, this, we're, not, we're not going fast, but like, there's a little bit of like slip. There's not a lot of like traction loss. The tires are good. Um, the suspension actually takes it very nicely. We're like, we're driving on this very rocky dirt back road and I'm not uncomfortable at all. A lot of people uh, that do drive Subarus, the first thing I find that they do immediately is swap it with either coilovers or air ride. If you're into that stock suspension, I mean, granted, I don't know too much about a WRX or a Legacy in terms of suspension, but Outback suspension from the factory is excellent. And yeah. I say it's excellent because I haven't swapped it yet, and I've been running this ever since I bought the car, and I'm not going to swap it out with a new suspension because there's really no need for it. Right. Yeah, this is, it's, you get like a factory lift from the like standard Legacy. I mean, obviously it's, a diff it's not a lift, but you're... Yeah. up a few inches from your standard you know sedan if you want to piss off all, if you want to piss off all the the car guys uh out there that say oh your car's not lifting you can always tell them well the tires added a little bit of lift to it <laughs> definitely feel like a little a little bouncy a little floaty with the with the um bigger sidewall on the tires than a, than a standard car but that's good you want that on a road like this right um this thing it's this thing's fun i like this <laughs> the throttle response on this thing's actually pretty good it's not bad yeah CVT, obviously not the greatest thing in the world, but you know, it's fine. Normal road, couple of turns. Obviously not gonna get full bearings just doing this, but you can tell a lot of body roll. But that's just a standard outback. Um, yeah, the sway bars are still in. Yeah. If they were removed, body roll would be 
uh, twice as mm. can't say bad. I would say twice as exciting. <laughs> but then you can like do some cool articulations if you really wanted to. That's true. Foot's down. Oh god. <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> it's so slow. Oh my god. 60. What do you have? 60? 65. <laughs> 70. Wow. <laughs> oh god, it's so slow. It's zero to thirty eventually. The road, like, like we were saying, the, the road manners are fine. Yeah. There's no wandering. Like the giant front bumper, like I don't have my hands really on the wheel that much. It's not moving in the lane. It's it's tracking really straight. Like it, it's perfectly fine for a daily. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little slower. <laughs> That's all. Just a tad. Yeah. But I, I really do think people might think this is like a bespoke sort of Subaru because of like the badging like you see the cool badging here um, and on the back uh, but you know if it was me as a non car enthusiast mm -hmm. I would definitely think this is like a specialized you know one off Subaru from some off road company so that is the apocalypse battle rally <laughs> rally Subaru Outback um, one last question before we sign off what are the what are the plans uh, for this thing in the future like for the rest of this year you know and, and in the years to come hopefully maybe we can get a a huge lift kit on it even though you don't want it <laughs> because i would love to drive this thing with a, a massive lift and crazy tires but what what do you have planned anything anything crazy or is it just more just uh, some of the small stuff to tweak it the way you'd like uh well originally the plan was to lift it and put a snorkel on it uh however you know being that i only really drive on easy dirt trails there's really no need for it the extra clearance would be nice, but I have yet to find somebody that wants to sponsor the build because those things can get pretty expensive. Uh, so right now the only, uh, I guess, mods, so to speak, for the rest of this year um, is to swap out the OEM headlights with something completely custom that is also being made uh, by my friend Joey. So again, like in the description, hit him up, he'll be able to make things for you. Um, one of the best uh, guys I know around that knows how to create custom things for vehicles. So once again, thank you to Dan. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the drive today. Um, very cool car. Uh, <laughs> might seem uh, might seem boring to a lot of people, but I can vouch that it is not. And people do look at this thing, and it is awesome, and I really love it. Um, if I had an Outback, I'd probably do the same thing <laughs> because it's just it's just unique and, and quirky and very very cool. So thanks again to Dan. Thank you so much. Um, his info is in the link below. If he is a photographer in the tri-state area, if you have any needs uh, for photography, uh, give him a shout on uh, Instagram or any of the stuff in the link below. And that'll do it basically for today's video. Uh, again, thanks to Dan. Very cool Subaru Outback. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for a lot more of these build videos. We're gonna try to do more with. Um, I think you guys have a couple more friends that we want to have some cool cars coming uh, to check them out to drive them around this area and uh, yeah if you guys have any cool cars that you have built be sure to contact us in the link uh, in the description below or email us it's contact at shiftinglanes.com that'll do it for today's video guys thank you so much for watching give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you liked it catch you next time see ya